Welcome back to the show. Junkies on 106.7 The Fan coming up in just about 25 minutes, right around 945. We will play NHLer or Russian politician for your chance to win tickets to go see the Capitals in their home opener tonight at Verizon Center. But right now, we're happy to be joined by Adam LaRoche from your Washington Nationals. Adam, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, guys. Good morning. How y'all doing? Yeah, doing okay, man. Thanks a lot for joining us. I know it's been a tough week for you, and you probably just got back in town and everything. Really appreciate it. Did you guys fly out that night after the game? Yeah, we did. We got back here uh, seven, eight in the morning. So wow. That was a, yeah, that was a long one. That must have been uh, a hard flight, man. That was tough. That was tough, man. It, it, you know, you hate to see uh, all that work and, and such a successful season end you know, way, way earlier than we, than we thought it should. So that was, it's just frustrating. I saw right. you talking in the post game presser in the clubhouse about how you're going to have a lot of time to process it in the deer stand or the hunting <laughs> stand. Uh, when is that going to happen? And you know, what are you going to think about when you're up there by, by yourself, uh, hoping to ki- uh, kill an animal? Uh, you <laughs> know, that's that's, that's, that's really what he's cool. doing. Jesus. He's going that's hunting. My... <laughs> hey, that's my favorite, uh, time of the year as far as postseason goes i get to kind of go home and get out in the woods and just kind of reflect on the season and and what went well what i need to work on and you know what uh just kind of look back on everything so again this one's pretty simple uh i think the regular season was great you know collectively uh you know good enough to to get into the playoffs which uh, uh you know all the teams can't say that and then uh you know come playoff time we just didn't hit Plain, right. plain and simple. Uh, pitching was great, and we just, as an offense, couldn't get it done. So, yeah, that'll happen probably tomorrow. I'm going to fly out this evening, uh, get everything packed up here, and head back to the ranch. Yeah, let me ask you. We've got to ask you a few questions. I don't know if you've answered all this stuff. And you, you know, you don't want to belabor it. You want to put it behind you and move on. But just still, you know, we were talking about it this morning. I argued kind of with Jason a little bit. And, you know, I, I think that bad luck did factor in this series a little bit. I mean, you mentioned it. They pitched well. We pitched well. They played well. They probably deserved to win, you know. But I think that bad luck did kind of play a factor. I mean, for example, you're an established major leaguer, Adam. The moment wasn't too big for you. You know, you just didn't get hot at the right time. Same thing for Jason. Jason's an established guy. The moment wasn't too big for him. Span, Ian, all those guys, the bats got cold at the worst possible time. Don't you feel like just luck factored in here a little bit? You know, I I, I agree with you um, because you had we had some hitters that we, we weren't we weren't going up and putting up awful at bats. We had some we had some really good at bats and hit some balls right on the screws, and unfortunately. Once it leaves the bat, you can't control it. Uh, you know, I'm I'm hitting right in front of Jason. I'm on deck watching every one of his at bats, watching him scorch some balls that are just, you know, right at people. Um, I can't I can't even I lost count of how many balls that I just missed. And yeah, you're right. When things are rolling, uh, you, you happen to catch those balls, you know, a, a half inch different on the bat, and it's a line driving the gap somewhere, or a ball in the seat. So it just, you're right. It, it kind of all came uh, at. Uh, at the wrong time, and that's um, and that's typical, especially of that five game series. I've seen it so many times where, you know, you, you've got to you got to be a good team, obviously, to get in there, and you got to be hot at the right time, um, and not not just on one side of the ball. Right. Talking to Nationals first baseman Adam LaRoche, one thing that was discussed by the media and even amongst ourselves is the impact of the wild card play in game, and the teams that sit for several days before the divisional series starts this year, only the Orioles were a team that had the home field advantage. It actually moved on to the championship series. Do you think there's a factor or an advantage at all for the teams that play in that wild card play in game? And I got to think it doesn't help. Um, and I'm just going off of, you know, the feeling at the all-star break, which the all-star break is, is, is huge. Just time to go back and kind of, recharge get away from the game uh, uh, for a few days but that feeling when you come back it's almost like another spring training game and you wouldn't think you think you play you know you play for three months straight three or four days off you know what's it what's the difference well I, there's something there where you know it, it takes a minute for your eyes to kind of readjust to, to 95 miles an hour and kind of get everything back you know seated in the right spot so i i don't know that it that it played a huge factor, but I know it doesn't help when you got to sit that long. And we did everything we could do. We had, you know, Matt had a 
had a scrimmage set up. We came out and tried to make it as real as possible, and you know, just try to keep that that competitiveness and the you know that that vision and everything going. And um, I don't know if that played into it or not. I, I wish there was something they could do to change that. Unfortunately, I think I think PV has too much control over the game now to where they kind of dictate when teams can play. Right. Um, Adam, you obviously, you're a smart guy. You know what's in front of you, and you, you were asked about your future here in Washington after the game. Um, I'm not sure if you want to talk about it, but I'm going to ask you anyway. You, you know that Zim's got the huge contract. You know he's got the shoulder injury, and or the issue anyway, and uh, a lot of people think the future for Ryan is first base, and you know you've got a huge option for, at $15 million or so for next year. Is that some, can you kind of take us through the thought process, or do you th- just feel it's out of your control now? No, we, you know, we can talk about it. I'm happy to talk about it again. It's, uh, I, I really haven't even thought about it a lot. Uh, obviously we just, just finished up. Um, you know, my initial thought is Zim will probably have to move to first. Um, and I think it'll be incredibly simple for him to pick that up as good as he is at, at you know, playing third. So it just may be a situation where there's no room, you know, and I hope that that's not the case. I've uh, I've been here four years now, and there's nothing I'd like more than to finish out my career in D.C. Um, you know, it'll just come down to whether it makes sense personnel-wise, and I'm glad that's not my decision. Right. Well, I wonder. I mean, obviously, you know, you know, we're huge Alan Roche fans. I know a ton of Nats fans that would love to have you back. Um, but yet, all that being said, you know, we were kind of kicking around. It's the first I really started thinking about it. We were kicking around possible destinations for you, Adam and J- and Jason throughout there. <laughs> no, n- not that we want you out of here, but here here was kind of my question. I wonder if you do this at all because at this, as much as you want to stay here, and I believe you when you say it, it's also exciting sometimes other opportunities. And 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 Jason throughout there, you know what? Orioles might not be a bad destination for him. You move Chris <laughs> Davis somewhere to DH. You put him there at first base. Maybe you know maybe put Davis in third. Who knows? Machado shortstop. When you look at those potential things, have you done that yet? Because that can be exciting. No, I haven't. But I've I've had that excitement enough in my life. Um, but you know, when you when we, we're in our we're in our 14th different home in 14 years this year. Wow. So you know, we've been at a different place in DC, and the reason I say that is because I don't think it's I don't think it's as exciting for my wife as uh, as it is for me bouncing around to these different teams and having to right. figure out new schools, new little leagues, and just keep repacking and and moving somewhere else. So yeah, don't get me wrong; it's uh, it can be kind of a, a change of scenery and, and kind of a fresh start for guys. But I also know that the grass isn't always greener. So right. I, I know I know I'm in an unbelievable situation here. Uh, I got a th- I got a chance to to thank Riz after the game for just allowing me to be a part of this, you know, four years ago, and, and I mean it. I, I know that this uh, this is just a class organization. I've been around a lot of them. And right. This is this is right up there at the top, and and I'd love to stick around. Um, again, it may not work out. I, I don't think it's going to have anything to do with the money. I, I really don't. I think it's going to be more of a of a position issue. You know, if there's a place for me, if, if there's if first base is open and they can do it, I think they will. If, right. uh, if it comes down, it just doesn't work out. I mean, that's going to be the deciding factor uh, more than the salary would be my guess. Well, I'd love to see you stay here. Swear to God. I love you. Absolutely love you. A couple quick questions. Matt Williams is taking a lot of heat. Okay. And we love Matt. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but we had Matt on every Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Um, people are questioning his handling of the staff and then the lack of tweaks to the lineup here, particularly in this series. What's your take on that? Was I mean, I know you're not going to be critical of your guy, but I just have to ask you anyway. Was there any move that jumped out to you at the time as a clear mistake? You said, you know what? If I was a skip, I wouldn't have taken Jordan out right there, or I wouldn't have put so-and-so in right there. It, was there anything as this was going on that you said, you know what? I would have done that differently. Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like a pitcher throwing the belt high spouse ball and when they swing through it and miss it it's a great pitch when they hammer it you know 500 feet it was a it was a stupid pitch so right. i will defend that till the end um that's a even though he wasn't on the field uh playing he's a big reason why we were in position and you know he had thousands of opportunities to make decisions throughout the course of the year and uh, the majority of the time they worked out. So, you know, when they don't, when we lose, 
there's no getting around, you know, looking back and and being criticized for those moves. Uh, if they would have worked out, they would have been genius. Right. Uh, and, and when they don't, it, it was the wrong call. So, you know, as a manager, you're stuck in a spot there where you know if this doesn't work out, you just, just plan on taking some heat for it. Did because you, then it looks like, you know, it, it was the wrong move. Yeah. Did you feel that – because one thing that I'm always – amazed by with you Adam is just your calmness your demeanor it's amazing did you feel though the pressure mounting as the series wore on because you always look so so calm you always look so locked in um but inside do, do you get like okay we're in a third game here I haven't started hitting yet Jason had started hitting doesn't you know none of we haven't hit yet I, I gotta get something going here are you feeling that because it doesn't look like it from the outside no I I can honestly say I never really did, and, and I, I don't think. Maybe you should have. And I don't think any of the guys did. I, I don't think because we <laughs> had been there. We had been there throughout the year. We'd been in those spots where it's kind of been dead. It's been flat, and then, boom, we get it going, you know, late in the ball game, we, we, We'd come back in so many close games and won them. Right. That I think everybody was just expecting, okay, no need to panic because – I know what that brings in me. I know when I go out there and say I have to get it done here, I have to start hitting, I've got to do this or that, it it, it doesn't work. It goes the other way. So I know, we, you know, as a group, we just need to stay the course and trust that it will be there, and it, and it, you know, it never was. And, it, you know, if I could go out and panic and play with that, that real sense of urgency and be successful that way, then I would do it. Trust right. me, I've been around long enough. I've tried about everything, and I know. Right you know, how to, how to get those results and how not to. And, and again, it's a round bat and a round ball. Uh, sometimes <laughs> it just doesn't work out. Right. You know, it was hard to watch Aaron Barrett kind of disintegrate out there. A uh, young guy hasn't been on that stage yet. He was, you know, he was very good during the regular season. He was the strikeout guy, especially against the meat of the order. But, and I can't even remember, did you go up and talk to him during those 12 pitches when he only threw four strikes and he was throwing the ball over Ramos's head? Did you go up to talk to, talk to him, try and settle him down at all? Uh, I did. I did uh, after after the the wild pitch on the uh, on the intentional walk, um, and I was just, you know, I could tell he was the the situation was was getting to him a little bit. You know, he was he was feeling it and uh, kind of outside of his element. So I, yeah, I just kind of cracked, just threw a joke out there, and I told him that I couldn't believe he had the guts to run that play in that situation, you know, because we got the guy out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. Is that know, what I kind of made it, I kind of made it sound like it was a set play that we've been working on. Right. I don't even know, I don't even know that he heard me. I think he was just looking right through me at that time. <laughs> so pretty, it's, a pretty good, it's a pretty good zing. <laughs> yeah, you were a ghost there. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to let you take over here because I know you have something you want to plug. Um, it's the LaRoche baseball complex. Uh, I assume it's out in Kansas. I'm not sure where can you kind of, t- and I know Luke Bryan's in- involved here. Can you kind of take us through it? Yeah, man, I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. We've been working on that uh, for about the last year. We're working on a new complex, new baseball facility in uh, my hometown in Southeast Kansas um, for our, for our high school kids there. And also to be able to hold some summer camps and some summer tournaments, um, Field's coming along great. My wife and I are going to fund uh, a big chunk of it, and then we're trying to raise some funds to to help with the rest of it. So it's going to be a partly uh, indoor complex, indoor batting cages and and locker room, and then uh, we've got a turf stadium field going in, and then getting uh, getting things set for field two right next to it to be able to host some tournaments there. Really, the goal is to one for the high school team to, to finally have their own field. Uh, we never did when I played there. We shared with the junior college and get those kids their own field, but also it's a really small town and, and hopefully to be able to bring in some revenue there and fill up some hotels and restaurants and gas stations for some of these tournaments. So Luke, uh, a longtime friend of mine, is uh, involved uh, pretty heavy in, in Buck Commander, our, our hunting company. So he's uh, he's been out to the ranch every year for probably the past eight or nine years and, and – has done some concerts out there. Him and Jason Aldean uh, have helped me out in the past. Done some charity concerts in town, and they're getting uh, they're, they're kind of ha- having an attachment there just with being in Fort Scott every year. So mm-hmm. he was nice enough to let me uh, basically auction him off for a night on uh, October 25th. He's got a concert in L.A., and we're doing a raffle to uh, 
help raise some money for this. And the winners, we're going to pay for them to go out to L.A. and, and uh, flight and hotel and backstage, get to hang out with Luke and get some signed guitars and wow. kind of get That's the awesome. whole experience there. So. By the way, if yeah, you're interested, if you're interested in the raffle, uh, it's www.lukebryanraffle.com. Lukebryanraffle.com. Hey, real quick, stupid, meaningless question, but I just have to know: <laughs> What does Bryce Harper have in his mouth? Like, it, it's not a mouthpiece; it's this red thing. What? It, I think that's a thing from his thumb. He puts what, it in there. That, what is he putting in his mouth? Guy, guys, I. I don't know that I've ever really paid attention to his mouth. So I, I <laughs> I'm telling you, it's that thumb. What does that thumb thing do that you guys wear? I know you know Valdez. What what does that thing do? The thumb, the thumb guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that thing do? Oh, it just um, man. There's a little there's a little nerve uh, on the inner part of your thumb, and just to, I've been swinging a long time, and the more you take balls off, you can actually uh, kind of rupture that to where it ends up nagging for about a week. So if you just wear this little thumb guard, it, it basically protects against that. So, What was it like, by the way, when he hits that home run in game four? I did notice that you were kind of by Matt Williams afterwards, but he was going berserk with Jason Worth <laughs> and everybody. Uh, well, I think that was kind of the point that – I think that was the spot we were all waiting on. I think we were all waiting on, okay right. – it's going to take one blow and then this thing, then we'll get clicking and then we're going to roll for a while. Um, and, but you know, in that spot, when it gets tied up, that's a huge run late in the game. Uh, so I, I think it was, it was just kind of a relief of like, okay, finally, you know, finally we're, we're back in, you know, somewhat back in control of this game. We got it tied up and, you know, keep some momentum going. I wonder if that's a regular season game. If Strickland throws at Bryce the next time, <laughs> cause they were, they did not like each other. No, well, I wouldn't like him either after uh, those those two home runs. Those were pretty impressive. Um, but, again, a uh, huge home run, and, and we just couldn't take advantage of it. Adam, you are a class guy, and, you know, we only get you on once or twice a By year. By the way, I want to but... say this. If you leave Washington and go somewhere else, I mean, Steve Trax is obviously a friend of ours, so I know he, he works with you, but I don't want this to be the last time we talk yeah, just because you, you move on. Again. You know For what I mean? Sure. Hey. I appreciate it, man. You guys got my number, and I mean that. Uh, call me anytime. This is not goodbye. It's goodbye for now. Goodbye for now. That's, hey, all. that's, what, that's what Davey Johnson said, and we haven't heard from him once. <laughs> well, we haven't tried. tried. We point. haven't tried. Hey, Adam, have a great off season, and I hope it works out here in D.C., but either way, I know it's going to work out great for you and your family. Thank you very, very much for joining us. All right, fellas. Appreciate y'all. Take okay, care. thank right, you, buddy. What's the name of the website again? It's uh, LukeBrianRaffle.com. That sounds like an awesome uh, prize yeah, if, it you does. Can, if you can win it. Mm-hmm. You fly out to L.A. with your wife or husband. You hang out with Luke Bryan for a night. See the concert. All it's expenses paid. I just and then ha- the money goes to uh, to help this complex that he's building out in Kansas. I just want to go to the ranch. We broadcast from the ranch. I would Sliced. love to. Go well, catch and, a tiger. And go kill animals. Go catch with a cakes. lion. Yeah, yeah, get up at a tree stand. How about cakes for the first question? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a great prize. Actually, two great prizes. Next, we're going to give you a chance to win some Washington Capitals tickets for the home opener tonight. What are we playing, Cakes? We are playing NHL or Russian politician. Next on the Junkies. 